Welcome back to Syracuse. Villanova leading by six. Dan Schulman, Bob Knight, Jay Billis, Aaron Andrews. The game day guys hovering right over our shoulders, critiquing our every word here during the game. And a coach, obviously, uh, you've had great relationships and influences in the coaching fraternity. Uh, and I know a guy who means a lot to you is retiring from that coaching fraternity. You know, there are coaches that just don't get the recognition because of where they are or or the league that they're playing in. And Gene Iba is one of those coaches. He's at Pittsburgh State in Kansas. And He's coached for 30 years and done a lot of great things for an awful lot of kids. Henry Iba's nephew, he's retiring, and we want to wish him the best. Of course, Henry Iba, one of the great influences in your coaching career. Corey Fisher, another steal. And, Jay, right now Syracuse is a little bit sloppy with the basketball. Well, they've made some passes just on ball reversal. They need to start making some pass fakes because a few times in this ball game, Reynolds has done it, Fisher's done it a couple times. They've shot the gap on ball reversal, and they've been able to take it the other way. Those live ball turnovers are either going to result in a layup or free throws, and Fisher again seeks out that contact and just about finish that play. He is a strong, strong guard. You know, Jay, we talk about observation and then recognition and Villanova has shown that to a great extent so far in this ball game. They really see where the ball is and move to do what they can defensively against it. And a very interesting mix for Villanova. They start two seniors and two juniors. They've also brought in six new players into the program this year. Five freshmen and a transfer, Taylor King, uh, who played at Duke a couple of years ago. So they've got a mix of experience and youth. And coach, because Jay Wright plays 11 guys, he admits he's still kind of tinkering with his rotation here at the end of February. But that's the most interesting thing to do from a coaching standpoint, Dan. When you've got kids like that, you're saying, okay, we're playing this team. What's our best lineup against it? Your best lineup against everybody is not always the same lineup. Second foul on Yuru. He goes to the bench. Anawaku follows up the miss. And Syracuse back within six. But Syracuse really needs to take as much time, I think, Jay, to get set up in the post as possible because they're just too strong one-on-one -on -one for Villanova's defensive post player. There's no question. Anawaku did a great job of sealing with that big backside of his, and it's going to be really tough for Villanova's less ample backsides to get <laughs> around in front. Stokes and he knocks down a three but you cannot let him shoot it from the catch spot if Corey Stokes is not made to put that ball in the deck he's gonna make shot after shot yeah what they lack in backside they more than make up for in shooting range Stokes can shoot it from anywhere the answer at the other end for Scoop Jardine Jardine's a Philadelphia guy Rick Jackson's a Philadelphia guy you know they grew up playing against all these Villanova players their uh, Ill uh, Syracuse bench has already given the offense about a third of its points. With Jardine and Joseph contributing. Now here come the Orange again. Jardine again. And Villanova ball. Syracuse not afraid to pull the trigger in transition because of the way they're set up out of this 2-3 zone. It really helps their running game when they get an outlet. Boy, Cheek not shy. Gets his own rebound. Stokes to the floor, but Syracuse has it. A gamble by Fisher, and it winds up resulting in the Villanova's ball. Fisher the pull-up. And a little ragged right now, a little frenetic. Jardine left hand. Syracuse back within four. Scoop Jardine hitting the three, and Jay now showing us he can scoop it up and in with his left hand. Well, that layup was the result, in my judgment, of a bad shot by Villanova. They did a really good job, Corey Fisher did, of breaking up an advantage situation in transition on the part of Syracuse. As quickly as possible from the free throw line, and you're not going to do it shooting quickly. And, Dan, that's been an issue thus far in the season for Villanova as they've been fouling too much. They haven't done that in this game. If you look at their numbers in their three Big East losses, they sent the other team to the line a ton. Joseph is fouled there by Armwood. Syracuse bench is angry, wanting it intentional. It's not going to be. It'll be a personal foul. And Joseph will be shooting a couple when we come back. He has given them a lift off the bench. Syracuse, though, still down by four. 
Back at the Carrier Dome, Villanova early, leading Syracuse 23 to 19. Both Coach Knight and Jay have talked about the advantage Syracuse has on the inside. Jay's going to take us inside the play. Well, here's an example of a big guy who works hard to get open underneath. You can see Arinzi Anawaku. He's open right now, but uh, Villanova does a good job to break around and get in front. But that doesn't stop Anawaku. He's going to play for an angle. He's going to use that backside of his and continue to work because sooner or later he's going to get open. And he does a really good job of sealing off in the post, especially when that ball he's playing with Rick Jackson that ball goes to the high post he can wedge his man push him up the lane he's a really good old school post guy at getting position as is Rick Jackson ESPN's Big Monday presented by Bud Light begins at 7 Eastern with number 13 Georgetown travels to Morgantown to take on number 7 to West Virginia then at 9 Eastern it'll be Oklahoma at Texas the Longhorns still trying to ride the ship they lost again today well, you can see the huge crowd we got about Maybe about 16 of the 34,616 people here are Villanova fans, but they have traveled from Philadelphia to root on their Wildcats, and wouldn't be a shock, guys, if these two teams met again in New York in a couple of weeks at the Big East Championship. Wouldn't be a shock maybe if they met even in Indianapolis at the Final Four. These are two teams that I think both of you feel could go a long, long way this year. The bench, of, which is Joseph and Jardine, has already contributed nine of the 20 points to the Syracuse Buzz. You know what you were saying, Dan? We've talked all season long about the Big East being far and away the best league in the country, and these happen to be the two best teams in the Big East. Taylor King is into the game for the first time. Number 31, a lefty, deep range, although has not shot the ball well in conference play. Look how spread out this zone is going to get. They're going four round one, and they are ball screening against this zone. Shot clock at three. And a block. Again, Fisher being the aggressor, and he's rewarded. And you've got to see that drive start, Dan. As soon as he puts the ball on the floor, the defense, and in this case the zone, has got to slide into position to take him head on. They were late getting there, so the foul is definitely a good call on the defense for being tardy and getting to the lane where they can block his route to the basket and draw the foul. And that's a result of the floor being so spread. It gives Corey Fisher some room, and boy, it makes it awfully difficult for Renzi Anawaku to get an angle to be able to take that charge. But, Jay, the, the Syracuse zone will expand or contract depending on who they're playing and what the strengths are, right? Yeah, but the problem is when you've got four shooters like Villanova's got on the floor right now, it's got to expand. Otherwise, they're going to start raining threes on them. And when it does extend out, then you're opening up driving lanes for this courageous driving team. The side opposite the ball is what Jay's talking about. That opposite side has really got to be able to move into the lane or toward the lane when the ball is taken away from it. Some that frustrated looks on the faces of the Syracuse players after that turnover. This is a great offensive team. Both of these teams are great offensively, but Syracuse a little out of sync at the offensive end right now. That's their eighth turnover. Syracuse has surprised me a little bit with its impatience on offense, Jay. They haven't really work the ball on each possession and when they have they've gotten something pretty good out of it. Look how wide those gaps are because they're having to extend out. Shot clock under 10. Reynolds. Screen by Pena. Reynolds splits it. King open in the corner. Air ball from deep in the corner by King. They took a little bit too much time fiddling around with the ball on top there. They took a lot of time and weren't getting much done when they did it. So there's uh, Derek Coleman, a great player here in Syracuse in the, in the late 80s. Of course, a national championship in 2003. Three trips to the Final Four, 1987, against your uh, Indiana Hoosiers. Derek Coleman was a part of that. Just an incredible run with so many great players for Jim Beheim in 34 years here at Syracuse. Well, sitting right next to him was Billy Owens and also Pearl Washington. What is that, about 6,000 points in Syracuse <laughs> history sitting in one row? Jardine. Anawaku. That almost spun in. Instead, is going to be shooting free throws. A little bit more patience and give in this lineup, Onowaku and Jackson, time to get posted in there 
and they're either going to score or they're going to get fouled. And that, I think, should be the focus of their offense every time down the floor. You heard the reaction to the free throw. That's because of how much he struggles. 39% on the season, and that's actually uh, an improvement. Excuse me, 43% this season. That's actually an improvement over the last couple of years. He makes one. They get the ball back, and now Joseph is going to the line. Well, that, that's a real big mistake by Villanova there. You've got a poor free throw shooter, and they don't get a free throw block out. Seventh foul committed by Villanova, so Syracuse coach into the bonus with more than eight minutes to go. Well, those big guys are going to continue to get fouled, and they probably aren't all that concerned about fouling Onawaku, but Jackson is a little bit of a different situation, I think. I think the problem you have when you give up fouls like that, two fouls without any time going off the clock, is now you've got Syracuse in the one and one. And they're in early as a result of that one missed block. You know, there isn't anything, and you remember back when you were coaching, when you were helping Mike, you, you know, I don't think anything <laughs> riles the guys up on the bench that, that, are, that are coaches more than how in the world can we miss a free throw block. One of two for Joseph. Number four, Syracuse. Number eight, Villanova. One and two in the Big East. The only regular season meeting between the two. This zone is so good that Syracuse plays that I think they should really be attacking it right from the beginning instead of taking a little bit of time just passing the ball. Joseph quickly, he misses. Rounds gets a great look, and he misses the three. And King, who has proven himself to be kind of a scrappy rebounder, he's got good rebounding numbers, second on the team this year, brings it down for the Cats. And he is just way off. His shooting touch is way off. And this is a guy, Jay, at Duke a couple of years ago, came in with a reputation as a shooter. Well, he's not shot the ball well at all in Big East play, but he's done some other really good things on the floor. Reynolds a miss. Pena. And a foul. I believe it'll be Jackson. Now it'll be Joseph called for the foul to take us to a break. Villanova leading despite the best efforts of Scoop Jardine in recent minutes. He's come off the bench and has knocked down some shots, gotten to the rim, and has helped the Orange stay in it here with the Carrier Dome. Thank you. So number one, Kansas loses. Number two, Kentucky loses today. Number three, Purdue hosts Michigan State tomorrow. Number four, Syracuse playing Villanova here tonight. 34,616 people, the largest on-campus crowd in college basketball history. Bigger than a number of cities in the state of New York. It was a special lottery for students. Many of them slept inside the dome on the concourse because it's so cold here. They don't want them sleeping outside like they do say down in Krzyzewski though so they slept in the dome they got so much snow here the last couple of days they heated the dome for the last 48 hours to 80 degrees to try to melt the snow off the top of the roof of the carrier dome but it's just an incredible story uh, you talk about coach that no community as elaborately as uh, decisively supports their college basketball program and, and that guy gets all the credit well I think that uh Dan, unknown to you, two kids sneaked in to make it 618. Oh, really? I think there are two kids they're, in here without tickets. Then they're going to have to redo all the T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, more of a driver than a shooter. And Corey Fisher, a great rebound. Fisher's been maybe the dominant guy on the court so far in this game. Here is Fisher from the wing. Well, Villanova's uh, shooting touches off tonight, or they would have an even bigger lead. And not a lot of patience on the offensive end by Villanova. Anuaku, great strength as he was held. Routens made a really good pass there, and by really good, I mean you pass the ball to three places inside, right at the offensive man to his left or to his right, and going left or right, you pass away from the defense, and he had that pass right on Owaku's left side away from the defensive man. And that's where I don't think Isaiah Armwood can gamble to try to get around in front on that pass. That's where you gotta stay between your man and the basket and make him make a tough shot over your size. Redding called for the foul, an air ball on the free throw from Anuaku. All right, Coach, you were right. You were exactly right. And Doug Holmes, our director, found the two people who snuck in here without tickets. 
we ought to give them a little extra credit for doing that, for being that big a fan. You know, you got a lot of great fans, but those two kids coming in like that, slipping in, that was pretty good. I'm, I mean, I've, I've heard of obstructed view seats, but that's ridiculous. They are, they're way down at the other end of the football field. Antonio Pena flashing inside, but he's got to flash and get out to give guys some room to drive. Well, we used to call that cut and replace. Cut in, get out, replace the guy, get two guys moving around. And a foul on the inside. Pena is going to go to the line. Women's college basketball is on ESPN 2's Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. It'll be number one Connecticut looking to keep the winning streak alive. They're at 68 in a row right now. They'll take on number eight Notre Dame at 7 Eastern. The Division I record for women for consecutive wins is held by the Huskies from 2001 to 2003 at 70. They're at 68 right now. On a walk of the foul, his second, Pena to the line. And Pena Jay, such an important guy this year. Dante Cunningham, Shane Clark, Dwayne Anderson, three pretty good front court guys leaving Villanova last year. And Pena was really the only experience they had up front. And he's their best post defender. He's very skilled down in the post. He does a really good job. He doesn't have a lot of ball. But you mentioned Dante Cunningham. He was a key player last year for this Villanova team. He not only led the team in scoring, but going up against Syracuse, he was the guy in the middle of that zone that gave them a playmaker in the zone. They don't have that same kind of playmaker as a big guy this year. Trish will play off him, give him the shot. Johnson. And a great offensive rebound and put back by Chris Joseph. Well, Corey Stokes got caught ball watching instead of turning and laying a body right on Chris Joseph. Gave up an easy bucket as a result. And he made no moves to get the block out, and Joseph really took great advantage of it. Reynolds, he'll do it himself getting to the inside of that zone. Once he puts the ball on the floor, you've got to close those driving lanes. You just can't let him split anybody because then he's got all kinds of things. He's got shots, he's got passes, but the defense has got to react to his driving route. Wow, Jardine, and it looked like kind of a force when it left his hand, but he knocked it down. Now, Jardine has really improved his shooting stroke from last season. He used to shoot it behind his head, but he's really refined it. Coming into tonight, he had shot the ball very well, as you mentioned, Jay, but he'd only made 11 threes, kind of selective about the three, but he's made two of them here tonight. Stokes, no. Jackson, the rebound. Scoop again. And here comes Nova in transition. Reynolds will pull up. And Jardine the rebound. A lot of quick shots in this game tonight. Joseph from Jardine. Look, Villanova's just going too quickly to the shot on the on the deep offensive end. I, I think they've got to make Syracuse play more defense. You think I've always felt that when you shoot quickly. The defense is going to get away quickly, and it just seems like one follows the other, and they take a little bit more time. Then when the defense gets the ball, they take a little bit more time. And you take a quick shot, all of a sudden you're putting your defense in a scramble situation at conversion. And nice little jab step, and Malik Waynes just takes one little step back. That's all the room that Scoop Jardine needed, and he draws Waynes right here and gives it up to Chris Joseph and I'll tell you what when Chris Joseph goes to the basket he reminds me of Jeff Green used to play at Georgetown now in the NBA very similar in the way that they play Jeff Green a little bit of a better passer though Joseph is just a sophomore but another guy whose confidence is growing and, and skill set is growing and coach said you talked about Jardine and Joseph what they lack in quantity off the bench they more than to make up for in quality we're only going to see two guys off the bench tonight but they've been as important as anybody in this game for Jim Bay well, you know they have seven starters with, with Jardine and, and uh, Joseph those two kids are capable of starting anywhere in the country a block on the inside by Jackson two on one Routens with a touch pass back to Trish but falling out of bounds he had to turn it over that was right over his back. Taylor King fouled him, and it wasn't called. Pushed right out of bounds. Can't miss that call. A little more patience here by the Wildcats as we go under four. A 
Deep shot by Armour. That's not the shot that Jay Wright wants. Now numbers. That's, yeah. that's got to be intentional. Grabbed his arm. You know, I, I really don't think you can call an intentional foul there because he is going to the bucket, and he was right there. You know, that's just almost the same thing as slapping him, and that's a, one of the few times I, I would think, don't call that an intentional. Two free throws Although from Wesley won. Johnson. <laughs> Back here with the Carry Dome. It's been a great start to this game. 31-30 by Syracuse over Villanova. One of the themes, shut it down. Defensively, they want to shut down Villanova. They've got all kinds of towels printed up. Jim uh, and Julie Beheim for their foundation to help kids and uh, uh, get money for cancer research here in Syracuse. Dan Schulman to Bob Knight, Jay Billis. We're going to make way at halftime for the game day crew, or really the this is the inner circle of the game day crew here with, with Reese Davis. <laughs> And Hubert Davis, yeah, Hubert's tie is always askew. And coming up on the UPS halftime report, number one loses. Tennessee beats number two Kentucky in a double overtime game in the ACC. Jay Hubert, by the way, keeps passing me notes, and everyone says the same thing. I'm here if you need me. I'm just saying. So I don't know if you got something to worry about. or Need a fresh arm in the bullpen. <laughs> Where's Digger, by the way? Digger is probably watching the game in our studio. He's reading a portfolio from Ryder. Actually, I have a. Uh, we believe we have found him, Coach. We have put our best people. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jay made a great. Jay made a great point here a moment ago when he talked about how difficult it is for the defense to get into conversion if the offense shoots the ball too quickly, and that's what Syracuse has really uh, taken advantage of in its own in its offense. Pena the mission and Villanova is now one for its last 15 from the field yet they trail by only two. I'll bet you eight or nine of those shots have been what I would call bad shots. What a pass by Johnson to Jackson. You know again we talk about observation and knowing what's going on knowing where people are. That ball didn't stay in Johnson's hands more than a split second before he made the pass for the bucket. It was just a kid knowing exactly where he had to pass the basketball. Great, great observation. Has there been a transfer who has meant more to his new team than Wesley Johnson, who spent a couple of years at Iowa State? Off-balance shot, Scotty Reynolds. Syracuse ball. Numbers again. Routens for three. And a push going on Pena. See, that's one to kick it out and outlet it quickly, and all of a sudden, you've got lanes run, and Syracuse has got a very effective fast break. This team is underrated in five for Wesley Johnson. who was considering some other schools, Pittsburgh, Ohio State, and others when he left Iowa State. And he came in and last year during practice, you always hear stories about guys who are sitting out of transfer saying, boy, he's tearing it up. Wait till you see this guy. But I don't know if anybody thought he would be this good, a legitimate contender for Big East player of the year and a potential first-team All-American. You know, Jay, you talked about the conversion game that Syracuse has and a big part of it is their recognition when they cross midcourt where to take the ball whether to pull up whether to drive whether to wait on a postman King knocks down a three Routens with a beautiful feed to Jackson Routens has such great vision and when he caught the ball the first thing he did was look at the basket you respect that shot and then he could put it on the deck and find somebody Reynolds with a miss Jardine the push. Routens and a foul. Watch when Andy Routens catches this ball. He looked at the basket. He got Scotty Reynolds on his hip and then drove the ball. The defense helps up. And Rick Jackson with those great hands makes the catch and finish of what was not an easy pass to catch. You know, a, a shooter that's as good as Routens is not always looks for other people and I think that's one of Routen's strengths as a player when he's moving with the ball he's not necessarily looking for his own shot if it's there he's got it but if somebody is open like was the case just there he's going to find that guy and get the ball to him. Uh, passing is in the blood his dad a terrific passer Leo who played here in the early 80s Jay, you know, a teammate of yours in Europe and with that free throw 
Andy Routens just tied Leo Routens' career scoring numbers here at Syracuse. They both got 1,032 points. Joseph made a great slide there in the zone. Tremendous slide to come up with that ball. He read where the pass was going to go and came up with it. And do you think Leo Routens is texting Jim Beheim right now saying, take the kid out. <laughs> <laughs> Protect me, coach. And by the way, there's another Routens coming. Ten-year-old Sammy is apparently a heck of a player. Scotty Reynolds is a heck of a player. That we know for sure. That was a huge bucket. Uh, if they were going to take that shot, that was huge that it went in. Jardine was given some great minutes off the bench here tonight. And he Jackson is vastly improved. So even with the losses of Flynn, Harris, and Devendorf, this is a better team now than it was a year ago. Well, it's an incredibly unselfish team. But in its defense, it's bigger out front. There's more length. It's got a much better rebounder on the baseline. I mean, last year they had Onowaku and Jackson, although both are better this year. But having Wes Johnson on the back line of that zone defense, he is an extraordinary defensive rebounder, one of the best defensive rebounders in the country. And the lead is six. Syracuse has had a great part of its offense has been free throws here in the last seven or eight minutes, and that's meant a tremendous amount to the, their scoring total here. They've gone 11 for 16, and that 11 points is far more than Villanova has gotten from the free throw line. Jardine, the pull-up, knocks it down again. Syracuse is killing Villanova with its transition. Off a missed basket, they are outletting it quick and really putting a lot of pressure on the transition defense of the Wildcats. And you know, that's a little bit unusual because Villanova is playing with three guys outside and two in. But they drive a little bit or they start creeping inside and then they wind up with the three on two going the other way. Yeah, and man to man, the guards would be going with those drivers, but in the zone, they're positioned out front to run. Fisher the handoff, Reynolds the three. And a foul. Well, that is not a good foul. That's two points right there, potentially, for Syracuse at the free throw line. The free throw line, once again, is hurting Villanova. That has been the issue for the Wildcats all season long. Unnecessary fouls. Villanova not even in the one and one. Only 16 fouls for Syracuse in the double bonus right now for Villanova. You know, when we were talking about this game a couple days ago, Joe, you mentioned, or uh, Jay, you mentioned that a thing that would be really important would be could Villanova keep Syracuse off the free throw line and I remember you telling me that that had been a weakness for them throughout the course of the year they had just given up too many free throws in too many games you know coach they're so aggressive on the defensive end they go for steals they slap down at the ball and they play so many people I think they foul too much and that's something they've got to get over they cannot put their opponents on the line as much as they do Fisher Good if it goes. It won't, and at the end of the half, Syracuse closes on a 20 to 6 run to go from four down to 10 up. Let's go to Aaron Andrews with G Wright. Dan, thanks. Coach, why was Syracuse able to go on that run that they did? Well, they're great in transition. I mean, we're not making shots, so every time we miss, long rebound, they're out running, they're great in transition. What adjustment do you make in the second half to stop that? It'd be nice if we could make some shots. That, that would help. And we just got to be smart about our floor balance. Sometimes we've gotten a couple of our, uh, when I got young guys in, our two guys are getting caught, our two men are getting caught inside. We got to get them back. All right, thank you. Dan. All right, Aaron, thank you. Well, they're loving it here at the Dome, especially Julie Beheim, the wife of head coach Jim Beheim. And they're loving more than anything the play of Scoop Jardine. He has come off the bench to score 12 points, the high score in the game. And Orange fans, present and past, are loving it. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome here in Syracuse. It is Saturday primetime, presented by DirecTV, all a part of Judgment Week. 
presented by Miller Lite. 34,616 wearing orange here for the Cary Dome tonight and enjoying so far a 10 point lead for Syracuse as we go to the second half. Dan Schulman, Bob Knight, Jay Billis, and coach. Uh, Syracuse did a great job off the bench. Jardine and Joseph combined for 21 points. Also did a great job in transition. Why? You know, one of the things that Jay and I have talked about a little bit, one of the things that happens with Syracuse in their conversion game, their break, the perimeter players really get in position to receive the outlet pass. And the rebounders don't have to look for them. They're there. The kid rebounds the ball coming to his left shoulder. There's an outlet right there that all he's got to do is bring it down and throw it. And that's why they're getting such a good start on a break because of how well those perimeter players position themselves for the outlet pass. You saw in the graphic how Villanova struggled offensively. Jay, how do they do better? Well, they've got to take better shots. Shot selection has been a huge issue for Villanova. They've taken 35 shots in the game thus far. 18 of those have been from three-point range. They've only hit five of them, but that's led to some breakout situations by Syracuse, and they've got to take better shots. This is a better basketball team than they